Our gospel lesson today is from the Good News According to Matthew, the 15th chapter. We're on page 20 in the New Testament portion of our Pew Bibles. Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at the 10th verse, Things That Defile. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting us to sit at your table. Feed us now with your holy word. Open our hearts not only to receive it, to be, but to be changed by it. May we grow into the people that you want us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you ever experienced being the outsider? Have you ever been an outcast? Have you been on the receiving end of someone else's prejudice because of your gender or your skin color or your ethnic heritage or because of where you are from or you fill in the category? Have you ever been that person that has been the outcast? I suppose that there are times where I am judged and treated differently simply because of the way I'm dressed. When I uh, stop at Quick Trip on Sunday mornings dressed like this, there are some people who are very kind to me. There's others who I can tell turn away quickly. Most people, though, are not unkind. I have to admit and recognize that being a white male automatically grants me privilege in our society that many others do not enjoy. And lest you think that I am merely talking about someplace else, someplace like Raleigh or Barcelona or even Madison, I need to tell you about a true story of something that happened recently here in Fort Atkinson. Three young adult friends we're walking down a sidewalk together. One of the friends, she is multiracial. The other friend is Caucasian, blonde hair, blue-eyed. 
And the third friend, a young male, has very dark hair, it's very short hair, and he has darker skin. As they were walking down the sidewalk past a house, a woman yelled out from her window, Go back to the country you came from. Now the blonde-haired woman, trying to diffuse the situation with a little bit of humor, shouted back, You want me to go back to Sweden? But the hatred had already been spewed and it hung heavy in the air. I have to admit, I have never had anybody say anything like that to me. Even though, if you did a DNA test on me, you would quickly find that my heritage does not trace to this country, but to Northern Europe. So as appalling as that event is, I bring it up to remind you of a couple things. Number one, you and I must be diligent in our efforts to push out prejudice, hatred, and fear, and hate speech in our own community as well as in our country and in the world. Secondly, I wanted to remind you that there are many people in our very community who know what it's like to be the outsider and the outcast, to be the one who is not welcomed automatically. And today's lessons are all about that, all about God's preference and God's love and welcome for all people everywhere. Why should it ever surprise us that God loves every single child that God has made? Lauren read for us from Isaiah, and Isaiah speaks of two traditional outcasts, two traditional outsiders who were not welcomed in the Jewish community, eunuchs and foreigners. Now, eunuchs were men who had a job to do. They were often those who would work for the queen or for women in the court or women of power, and to make sure that these men would not do anything with those women that wasn't appropriate, there would have been a surgical procedure so that they could no longer father children. This, of course, caused changes in their body beyond just the fact that they couldn't bear children. And they were often judged and treated harshly by other men because they simply were not whole men. And so they were targets. As were foreigners, people who spoke differently, dressed differently, ate different foods, had different practices. There was a wariness, a fear of those from other places. And so often in Isaiah's day, those people were definitely outcasts. The warning here, the comment, God's message through the prophet is that those who claim me as their God, those who understand that I have made them, those who worship me are every bit as good as any of you. So God looks at the heart, not one's outer appearance. This, of course, is the very same idea from Galatians that we also shared this morning. For those who are in Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, and you could add to the list things like gay or straight. For those in Christ Jesus, there is no difference. We are one body. And then there's our gospel lesson. What a wonderful story. Jesus has just been teaching his disciples about kosher, about what is clean and unclean, about what taints a person. The Pharisees of the day were all concerned about all of these outward appearances, including some food laws and proper washing of hands and so forth. And the disciples have been criticized by the Pharisees, and they talk to Jesus about it, and he starts to talk to them about what really defiles a person, what really makes you unclean. He says it's not really about diet, you know. It's about how you treat people, how you live your life, what you say and what you do. And just after teaching about clean and unclean, what does Jesus do? 
he goes to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Big deal, right? We would, we would hear that, and it doesn't even register with us. But if we had been Jesus' disciples or people of that day, and we heard that that's what he did, we would have gone, what? Why did you go? Why would you do that? Why would you go to a place that makes you unclean because all the people there are foreigners and they're unclean? Why would you go where the people are despicable and awful? Why would you go to Tyre and Sidon out of your way? But Jesus has a plan. He goes there on purpose as a lesson, following up on the clean and unclean to show the disciples something new. My opinion is that Jesus acts and talks the way the disciples think he should at the beginning, just to lure them in on what's going to happen. The woman starts to follow him. She's a foreigner. Her daughter is sick. Jesus ignores her as they knew she would be ignored. That's what the disciples expected. And the more she shouts after him, the more annoyed the disciples become, and they finally say, tell her to go away. And Jesus does exactly what the disciples expect. He calls her by a derogatory term. He uses the word dogs. And this isn't like little toy poodle, cute little lap dog. The word for dog that Jesus uses is like junkyard dog, a mongrel, a mangy mutt. And amazingly, she doesn't turn and run away. The big dog has barked, and she barks right back. She runs with the big dog. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs at the master's table get to lick up the crumbs. And Jesus heals her daughter. This would have been very shocking to the disciples. Why would Jesus, first of all, talk to a woman? Secondly, why would he heal a little girl who had no power or authority and didn't really matter because she wasn't one of them? And yet here he is in this unclean land with these unclean people, and he does this amazing thing. He heals her. And that would have been shocking. The disciples suddenly are given an example of the fact that Jesus plans to love everyone everywhere and to change their lives. This is the beginning, you see, of Jesus' ministry where he opens the disciples' eyes that it's not about protecting us, just the people of God of Israel. It's about the whole world. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And just in case we don't get it, or the disciples didn't get it, Jesus' last words to them in the Gospel of Matthew are this. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. All nations. All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then it makes all of us think of that verse that nearly every Christian around the world knows by heart. For God so loved the world. Not for so God so loved just this little group, it's everybody. Here's the zinger. That means that God even loves the misguided woman who shouted out her window at the three friends walking down the sidewalk as much as he loves you or me. The difference is she doesn't know what that love means yet. She doesn't understand how that love changes you yet. When we say here at Trinity that we are striving to share Christ's love with everyone, everywhere. We mean everyone, and we mean everywhere. This little incident, as sad as it is, is a reminder to us that we have a lot of work to do. 
between ourselves of what it means to love one another of those who gather in this space, but especially those who live in this community and those who live all across this country and those who live all around the world. It's a good reminder for us today that Jesus came for all, not just for me, not just for you. May we discover and claim what it means to be disciples of Jesus who share Christ's love with everyone, everywhere. In his name, amen.